Aloha Kako. Uh, this is my second time here at Kumukahi. And um, my name is Taupori Tangaro. And this year we're very fortunate. Auntie Sissy opened her invitation to our family. This is. Aloha nui o Kekuhi Kieli Kanako Ole o Haile Lani Keia. I'm Kekuhi. Aloha. It's my first, yeah, my first time to Kumukahi. <laughs> and we husband and wife and our kids in the room and, and then our dancers as Kumuhula ourselves, our dancers become our children also. So our family is here. Um, we both descend from the traditions of uh, Kekui's family, the Kanaka Ole traditions of Apuna and Ka'u. Uh, we're trained in Keokaha in, in all kinds of hula, largely hula with deep ceremonial ritual significance. So why are we here at Kumukahi? As kids, we uh, the first hula that we learned were considered simple kid hulas. But we learned later on in our adulthood that these hulas are actually the oldest hulas that we have that come down from our from Kekui's great 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 grandparents. Seven generations they come down and even further. And we are finding that um, not much people are doing them these days. And if they do them, they they do them for competition, and therefore the hulas get um, revamped to meet the competition criteria. Um, but we come to Kumukai because it just allows you to just dance the way you was taught. It is a competition, but the competition is more of a personal need to, to challenge yourself, and not necessarily <coughs> to compete with someone else. Yes, yeah, so there's all of two rules. Yeah, I don't know. You know the rules. The rules is... Uh, well, you got to make your own lay. Make your own lay. And, and, and dance a legacy dance, a, a dance that you've learned from one of your teachers. Yeah, so when I learned about that, um, um, I couldn't come last year. But one reason why I'm here is because uh, when Auntie Sissy asks, um, because she just has so generous uh, with her time because she has a huge vision and people around her to move towards that vision um, you, you, you just got to say yeah and in that saying yeah I've, um, I've, I've had big learning here um, it's the first time actually that I um, experienced a lot of the old hulas um, some of them from Auntie Kanani, um, Kalama, um, and some of them from um, Pua, Pualani, Auntie Pua Alama's daughter. Um, some of the hula from Auntie um, Sissy's own tradition. And those those hula people, I mean, not the me and you kind people. I'm talking about the hula um, people, the melee itself, the motions themselves, the footwork themselves. They want to live and they wanna um, they wanna express themselves in the world, and so to to come to Kumukahi means to support that. And uh, my grandmother was um, Edith uh, Kanaka Ole, and um, her and she is my first Kumu, and her mother was uh, Mary Kekueva, um, later on married Fuji. And um, she was my grandmother's kumu. And um, from Mary Fuji came um, both my grandmother and our auntie Kalei Kiahi Lihau, who later on moved here to the mainland. And then um, one of her sisters is Lenora Kiahi Lihau, and the other one is Auntie Harriet Kiahi Lihau. And those three sisters taught hula here, not too far away from where we are now. So, um, and I was actually raised in San Francisco for the first, <laughs> yeah, for the first uh, few years of my life. And so I have a kind of pili over here. And so to be here for, for the occasion um, of Kumukahi um, is um, is to uh, for me is to connect me to those three ladies who are really important in my um, in my early childhood. I think there is a in my in my in my immaturity. I used to think that all Hawaiians should come home um, to make Hawaii strong. But that was in my, I was immature. Now that I'm a, a mature, I realize that we need to have more Hawaiians around the world singing, 
dancing, cooking Hawaiian food, making Hawaiian babies, creating Hawaiian communities. It's interesting where the Hawaiian stands, they, we, we gather people around us and we don't really care what people's nationality are. People are looking for community. They're looking for meaning. And I learn, and sometimes at home, because we live in a Hawaiian environment, everything's in Hawaiian, sometimes we become complacent. Sometimes we just assume things are going to be, and we don't even think about some things. Here in, in America, we call this America, the continent, um, the Hawaiians have to work extra hard. And whatever little they have, they value. And, um, and so as, as it relates to the hula, they have some gems because when they came up here, they brought up some hulas that we don't see at home anymore. And they still do them like they did it 40, 50 years ago. So that's always great to reflect. Um, but, you know, one of the kumuhulas was saying, you know, um, she too always wanted to go home, but then she realized where she stands is Hawaii. And I thought that was humbling for me. That's beautiful. Sometimes we get full of ourselves. And sometimes we, and I'll be honest, sometimes we think second of, um, you know, we want our people to come home. And, but there's so many ways of coming home. Coming home in spirit sending your kids home for school, coming to visit. But the world needs Hawaii. The world needs aloha. And I really was humbled by that woman that says where she stands is Hawaii because then the whole world will recognize her for her aloha. So I learned that here in Las Vegas. Yeah, aloha. This, um, that was my big lesson um, too. And I told you in my 20s, um, thought that everybody should be home on the landscape in Hawaii, um, fighting for the lands or whatever it is. Um, what the communities here taught me in the last two days um, was, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to bounce off what Tangaro said, um, is the fact that there. Um, they are Hawaii uh, from head to toe and they don't necessarily need to be on the landscape to teach people around them that they're Hawaii and uh, it's amazing and again that was my big lesson and so I could just say ditto and end it right there um, but Uncle Mel uh, he was the kum he's the kumuhulo for the ukulele the ukulele group that won um, you know, they sang home in the islands and I, I've heard it a hundred times, but they sang it as if they were never, ever going to see it again. And they sang it as if all of everything, everything that had meaning to them at that moment, um, they pulled from their Hawaii homeland. And it's amazing the kind of people that Uncle Mel has uh, attracted, like a fishing koa, um, to to the strings, and um, through the the Mele Hawaii, and um, that I I I cried, and I said, "Girl, you know, it took <laughs> I'm 48 years old, um, and it took me a long time to learn that, and I learned that here, I learned that." You don't have to be physically connected to the island. And I knew this. I teach this stuff. You know. I say when you go, you're Hawaii from head to toe. Inside and out. And you take that and you make like a forest. And and um, and um, what you call that. Create no little forests around you. But my, but my, my na'au never know that. Until I came here and listened to Uncle Mel and and Auntie Kanani and um yeah I don't know what else to say about that that was it that was that was the big whoa I think um and then the reverse of that is also I think people who have to leave Hawaii because their jobs and their families are here I think there's a little guilt that they they sometimes feel in them they're always talking about home 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 we want people, if you're going to live here in this environment, celebrate your connection to this environment. Don't be regretful. It's like having to go to your tutu's house, but you say talking about somebody else's tutus. I got to live in this tutu house, but I really want that other tutu's house. So, you know, 
if you're going to live in this sacred landscape, if this is going to be your physical Hawaii, then learn the names, create songs about you as Hawaiians living in Nevada and how you create Hawaiian communities here. Um, so that's one. The other is we want to help the Hawaiians here or the people that were born in Hawaii and aren't ethnically Hawaiian but only know Hawaii. We want them to um, begin to celebrate their life here that it's part of evolution we've migrated the human being mi migrated around the whole world don't live a life of guilt yeah celebrate the fact that you hawaiian or you from hawaii and this is where you live today and this is where you make your lifestyle the thing that's going to keep you hawaiian is your food uh, talking pigeon, talking Hawaiian, singing things Hawaiian, dancing things Hawaiian, naming your babies after your 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 genealogy. Those are the things that are going to keep you Hawaiian. Um, and 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 don't be regretful that you have to live far away. And if you miss home, then come home for vacation. But if this is your land, celebrate the fact that you know this is uh, Hawaii is here. There's a lot of Hawaiians here. We walk in a casino. Sometimes I think I stay like home. You know, you can just start away to walk. And they, you know, they, you can tell the Hawaiian when they walk, and um, so that's really great for us that Hawaii is growing, and that Aloha is coming with us wherever we go. The world really needs that, and hula is a dance for the, when hula people dance and sing, their spirit dances and sings. So Hawaii has something big to contribute to the world, and so let's celebrate that.